It's the show where the people are the stars. Tonight, a man wrestles with a weighty decision. Sarah picks some sweet peas. The public play along with our problem piano. Feathers fly when cowboy meets Indian. Pringle the penguin presents his predictions. Laughing policemen tell ticklish tales. A wife goes into a dive and surprises her husband. Matthew gets afloat and sinks a swimmer. And a husband sees red when his house is turned blue. And the host song goes for Lafa, Henry Kelly. Jeremy Beadle. Sarah Kennedy. And Matthew Kelly. very much indeed and welcome to another edition of Game Flap. You know what a cracker of a program we have tonight. Now I'm going to be probably doing a studio game and then introducing some films and then... <laughs> Matthew, what are you doing? <laughs> I just have to be pointing out Henry. <laughs> the fact that I've got the script on me Gansy. <laughs> I've got the whole of this week's show on me wallet. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, Matthew, how nice. Matthew loves Sarah, isn't, isn't he? A yes, I'm sorry, Sarah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I could not keep it from the public anymore. Because people are beginning to talk. Yes, and you know what they're saying. Yes, we know what they're saying. What are they saying? They're saying, Jeremy Beadle rules OK. <laughs> Let's get on with the very first game. Just before we started this evening, I called for a man to come down here to help us prove that the age of chivalry isn't dead, and we've got such a volunteer. Well, he didn't quite so much volunteer as his wife volunteered him as being chivalrous. And before we begin, I wonder if we could have that wife down here now, please. <laughs> Okay, your name is Alison. Alison. Okay, Alison. Now you said, uh, what's your husband's name? Sean. Sean. Okay. You said that Sean is chivalrous. Yes. Yes, good. I hope you're telling the truth. Otherwise, of course, you might have to pay yeah. the consequence. But I wouldn't worry. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. Um, now, for instance, you say he's chivalrous. Would he go around pushing custard pies in people's faces? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to think about it. You remember <laughs> you said that he's chivalrous. <laughs> He wouldn't, would he? No. no, of course he wouldn't. OK, right. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to give him a custard pie. And we're going to ask him to put it in the face of one of four people. OK? <laughs> now, he's going to have the choice which of the four people, and one of them is going to be a lady. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Right, OK, well, I'm afraid it's, it's, it's going to be you, OK? So, but he's going to have absolutely the full choice, all right? So we don't have to do any problem. So if you'd just like to go off now, we'll find out just how chivalrous Sean really is. A round of applause, please. <laughs> right, so can we have Sean back in, please? <laughs> oh, chivalrous, sir. Now, just relax, just relax. Now, what's going to happen is that we're going to see if the age of chivalry is dead or not, OK? Now, we're going to have four people come in, and we'd like you to shove that custard pie into the face of just one of those four people. So you've actually got to put it in the face of one of these four people that are coming out, OK? So the decision is entirely yours, OK? Can we have the first target, please? to see the second one. OK, well, thank you very much indeed, sir. <laughs> right, well done. Now, it's got to be one of the next three, OK? So can we please now meet target number two?
Well, uh, Sean, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to have the next one. You're going to have the next one. Well, You've got two left, OK? So now, uh, the decision is entirely yours, so can we now meet target number three, please? Thank you. Oh, yeah. Wait, there's, there's no need, there's no need to... <laughs> to right? Now, the decision is entirely up to you. Now, just think about it. Uh, Alison has said that you are very chivalrous. Are you sure about this? Because, of course, there is another choice to come in yet. <laughs> no, this one I do. <laughs> this one. <laughs> and, and you said he was chivalrous. <laughs> well, you know, if you'd like to discuss it, I'll just go away and have a quick drink. <laughs> it's up no, to you. No, 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 better not. <laughs> <laughs> You better not. Better not. No. You're going to have the fourth. Yeah, we'll have the fourth. We'll Splendid. Have okay. Right. Okay. If you just like to come over here. Right. Okay. So now this is the face that you must plant that pie into. Okay. Uh, by the way, where do you work? Brian Mitre. Oh yes, of course. Um, and your your boss is. Uh, uh, <laughs> Roger Healy. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet Sean's boss, Roger Healy. <laughs> OK, so this is your boss, I think you've met. This is the pie. This is your decision. Sean, it's up to you. We'd like to thank Roger, and I'm sure he'll be thanking Sean tomorrow. I'm not sure whether <laughs> Sean... I'm not sure whether Sean will be having a job tomorrow. <laughs> but I think you'll agree that both Sean and Alison were game for a laugh. He was gone anyway. He saw the look in the eye. <laughs> and you know, I've never really trusted Beadle. Nothing personal, Beadle, nothing personal. But I've always felt fairly confident with Henry. <laughs> until the day that he said to me that he was going to make me a world champion. And I said, well, what sort of a world champion? He said, can't tell you, can't tell you. So I said, well, what about the training? Top secret, top secret, can't tell you. So I was getting a bit miffed at this because it appeared that everybody seemed to know what was going on except the potential world champion, namely me. <laughs> That's it. That was absolutely terrific. Well I done. I hope you know what you're doing, because I certainly do. Of course I know what I'm doing. Look, by the end of today, you will be a world champion. Going to make you more famous. I don't want to be a world champion. Of course you do. Sarah, look, just... Last time I left myself in your hands, you know what happened? I ended up on the top of the fourth bridge with the wind blowing up my string vest. I, I don't know whether that's you. <laughs> up in the world, and I guarantee you, by the end of today, with the work you've done already, I mean, we've only been here a few minutes, and you're almost an expert at it. Just leave it to me. There's only one thing. There are more exercises to be done. Come on. And down, and up, uh, um, 
This isn't going to make me very butch, is it? No, not at all. Harry, there's just one thing. This isn't indelicate, is it's it? It's not going to be indelicate. I think you've got it. I'm just a little bit anxious about one thing. Well, if the rain keeps on, you see, your equipment could swell up in the damp. Equipment could swell up in the damp? <laughs> Of washing up to do at home. It's the world championship, sorry, you'll be terrific. You remember the exercises, okay? <laughs> right, give Just me, like, give me my equipment then. Just a little purse. Give me my equipment. 12 yards away from the target, okay? Oh. Yep. Every pee you go is a winner. Do you know this There's takes me back? This takes me back. There's your equipment. I used to do Special this. Peas. I did this to Barry Green at prep I'm school. Sorry, a regulation got... pea shooter should be 12 inches. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there, in every competition? You huh? <laughs> couldn't even get that right, could you? Sarah, look, forget it, but go on, go on, Sarah. What you can do, do it. I do with them? Stuff the peas in your mouth and blow. <laughs> <laughs> one day I'll make the same suggestion to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, here we go. Here we go. Shh, right, quiet, please. Oh. Well, just <laughs> up a little bit. Purse and the McIntyre grunt. Purse and the grunt, yeah. And the born, the yeah. born thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, so. <laughs> uh, excuse me, excuse me, could you tell the line, please? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> okay. we'll never win now. Look, you chat him up and I'll go a bit nearer. Okay, okay. Uh, lovely, isn't it? Great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's okay. laughs> We've been putting a theory of mine to the test. The theory is quite simple, that the great British public are kind and helpful and would never leave a stranger in distress. I mean to say, what would you do if somebody asked you uh, to hold on to a piece of rope which was apparently supporting a piano which was hanging in the air? <laughs> now, it looked like a wonderful piano. I have to add, it was a really rather grotty one. <laughs> they didn't know that. Hold of this for me. Cheers. He's gone off to get the phone and left me. I've just only got to adjust the top thing. It's not, it's, it's not heavy or anything, it's just a matter of keeping the tension. Is all right? Sure. Thanks, Cheers, mate. Yeah, what will be, <laughs> be two tips. Thanks a lot, mate. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Musical, are you? you? Couldn't sort of play a few notes. Oh, yeah, you feed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no way, Dave. <laughs> what did you think when that came down? <laughs> Nothing, quite got the price of things. Would you mind, really? Because I want to take two ticks, and I just got to do that. The guy's gone. I can't even find him anywhere. Well, you've got two ticks. Yeah, you know, yeah. I know. I've been holding it for five minutes myself. It drives me insane, doesn't it? I mean, this is the weather, isn't it? Oh, we're doing what? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, mate. I'll be with you. Two ticks. Just keep it taut, with me, mate. Oh, 
still alright? You only have a got me. 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 You only have a right straight away. And him, I sussed him out. You know what I mean? And me. Well, tell us. Pickle on your bike. <laughs> what are you thinking when you hold it? Well, as it goes, babe. <laughs> <laughs> what? He done me up, he done me up. Who's this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm standing there like, I'm standing there like, like a wally. <laughs> no, I wasn't swearing anything. <laughs> I'm standing there like a wally. Oh, uh, Nickers. <laughs> Public are wonderful. We'd like to thank actor Tony McHale, who kindly helped us out, and those three passers-by, John Bowers, who couldn't be with us tonight, but Ronald Parrish and Alan Julian, who are both game for a laugh. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my turn to play. Hooray! Oh, the thought of doing a game now. Oh, where's me? I've had such a week this week, I can't tell you. I'm a husk, I'm a shell, I'm a shadow of my former self. <laughs> and what with me very close veins, I'm of course I'm never without pain. So I thought, this week, just by way of a change, why don't I give myself a week off? Instead of organising a game and everything, why don't they do their own? Do you see? So, ladies and gentlemen, in our studio next door, we have two gentlemen who are waiting to play a game. They don't know what game. They think they're going to come in here to play a game. And in fact, they don't know that we can see them. Now, Ian Warden is, uh, who we'll be seeing in a moment, will be dressed rather bizarre. Oh, yes, here he is now. Yes, the <laughs> more observant among you will notice that he's dressed as a Red Indian and, of course, is armed with the obligatory uh, Wild West soda siphon. <laughs> now, any minute now, a gentleman called Kieran Rock is going to appear and he will be equally bizarrely dressed and he will also be armed with his own toy. I wonder how long it takes them to actually work out a game of their own. when our mind reader reveals something fishy. The boys on the beat drum up some super stories, a wife takes to the water and leaves her husband high and dry, Matthew gets the wrong end of the stick, and a lady has the house painted. Will her husband spot the difference? to pursue the ceaseless search for talent. Will you please put your hands together this week for a mind-reading duo as we bring to you Barry Johns and Pringle. Yeah. Ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, for eight years, with great self-denial, concentration and effort, <laughs> my partner Pringle and I have developed the greatest mind-reading act the world has ever seen. See, ladies and gentlemen, Pringle is an ESP, which stands for Extrasensory Penguin. <laughs> and we would ask you now, ladies and gentlemen, to empty your minds completely, please. Would you empty your minds? Thank you very much. On no account, please, on no account, think of fish. <laughs> because this ruins penguins' vibrations and would destroy the whole demonstration this evening. So don't think of fish, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Well, we start our demonstration, ladies and gentlemen. You ready? You ready? Uh, <laughs> clear your mind. <laughs> That's a mind-clearing gesture. <laughs> All right, my son. Start now. Is there a Mr. Herring and Miss Mackerel in the audience? <laughs> But don't think of fish, Pringle. Don't think of fish. <laughs> you ready? Right. You ready, Pringle? <laughs> There's a Mr. Malcolm Warden in the audience. Is that right? <laughs> it is right. You just told me it was right. <laughs> Mr. Malcolm Warden, are you there? <laughs> But he was supposed to be coming here. <laughs> now, I haven't got the wrong name. <laughs> I don't do anything, sir. This is all done, transmitted by my friend here. <laughs> is there a Mr. Bill Faulkner here, please? <laughs> Would you stand up, Mr. Bill Faulkner? <laughs> Well done, son. Well done, son. You're cooking now, boy. You're cooking now. <laughs> you were a, an ambulance driver, Mr... Is that right, Mr Faulkner? An ambulance driver? That's right. That is right! <laughs> you're doing well. You're doing well. <laughs> Mr Faulkner, would you please concentrate now and think of your car registration number. Think of your car registration number. Right, get going, son. Right, this is it. This is the big, this is the big bit now. This is make or break those eight years in that bed sit, son. <laughs> think, of, think of your car registration number. Your car registration number was COD4ME. <laughs> Can't for me, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm very sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, uh, Pringle has been thrown by the non-appearance of Mr. Malcolm Warden. <laughs> and now, we would like to demonstrate my incredible harmony with my friend here. <laughs> Pringle will move away. I would be blindfolded, my ears covered, <laughs> my ears covered, ladies and gentlemen. I have everything you require, Barry. And Pringle will send the message by mental telepathy to me, and I will throw a fish <laughs> which Pringle will catch in his beak. Blindfold. Ready for the blindfold, Barry? I've just let Pringle wander down. Pringle, off you go, son. It's all right. <laughs> I'm with you, I'm with you. <laughs> Do your thing, Pringle. Oh, you've done it. Right. <laughs> right, 
Blindfold on. Blindfold on. Your phone's on? Right. Can't hear a thing? No, I can't hear a thing, no. <laughs> There's the fish. All right, Pringle. <laughs> I get a feeling in the fourth row, in the fourth row. All right, Pringle. Hey, catch some. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, got, I'm with you, Pringle. I'm with you. Yeah. All right, Pringle. There you I... go. <laughs> Eight years. <laughs> go, ladies and gentlemen, and will you please thank very much Barry Johns and Chessington Zoo for providing us with the real star, Pringle. Let's change the subject and talk about the police, because traditionally a copper's lot is not a happy one, but I was to learn that they do get the odd moments of light relief, and I learned that when I was sharing a dish of tea with some of the coppers at the Winchester Cop Shop, and they had some very arresting stories. <laughs> arresting stories! <laughs> <laughs> this I can't uh, take any credit for. This was told to me by a sergeant of mine who's since retired. He and this uh, particular officer, who was noted for his bravery, go to a house in Basingstoke where there is a man who's got a shotgun. It turned out to be an air gun, but however, it's very unpleasant. And eventually, uh, the motorcyclist, uh, who was the gun on one, he decides that he's going to take some action and he stands up and grabs hold of the public address system on the patrol car and says, Now then, my man, can you hear me? And there's a further shot. And he said, I'm going to count up to ten and PC Wheeler will come and get you. You <laughs> get out of it. If you want to go and get him, you do it. Correction, Arthur Wheeler will count to ten. I will come and get you. And he did. <laughs> yes, walking in the... High Street area, uh, he came across a car with its windscreen broken and there was an Irishman, the driver, with it and we tried to fix him up with a replacement windscreen but uh, he didn't have the money for that. So in the end I said to him, well, you can put a bit of uh, plastic or perspex over it, uh, that'll do you to get you home till the morning. So he said, oh, that's good, I've got some, some in the boots. So he went to the boots and uh, pulled out two <laughs> black plastic bin liners. <laughs> Allsford, I saw a vehicle coming the wrong way along the dual carriageway. So uh, I could pull out to the middle of the road and headlights on and blue light and wave my arm out the window to try and stop her. And eventually this woman comes up to us and she passes me about 10 miles an hour shouting out of her window, get over, get over, do you want all the road? <laughs> so I whistled up the dual carriageway and you can believe me or believe me not that I was travelling at 85 miles an hour to try and get ahead of her. We came to a roundabout, she went the wrong way round the roundabout and continued on to the dual carriageway again. <laughs> so I whistled down the end of the dual carriageway where I eventually managed to stop her. And she calls me a Gestapo pig who <laughs> had nothing better to do but pick on old ladies. And how was she to know it was a dual carriageway? <laughs> I don't remember this one now. Little old lady parked her car under a sign that said parking uh, limited to two hours, returned prohibited within one hour. And I'm walking along and this little old lady runs up to me and says, please, please, can I go back to my car? My shopping only took me five minutes. She said, I've been waiting 57 minutes now. <laughs> yes, we, um, there was a, a rather eccentric dog handler who could never quite get the knack of not having a dog with him when he left the dog section. And he was a station duty officer. And this imaginary dog used to go everywhere with him. He used to say, sit, and go up to the counter and talk to someone at the counter and then turn around and say, stay! And I used to look at this chap. Well, this went on and on and on, and we used to have a, there used to be a really good laugh about this, but the, the superintendent decided that he had to do something about it. And he called him into the office, and he, he went in, saluted, sit, he said to this thing. And uh, to this imaginary dog, and the superintendent said, now look, this business with this stupid dog of yours has got to stop, he said. We just about had enough of it. And he stood there and he said, very well, sir. I have it put down. <laughs> <laughs> One will OCD put out a, a directive that messages would be written properly and comments wouldn't be put on them. This was uh, not here. 
another station. The next day, he opens up the message slips, and about four down is one very carefully written, fire at, and the rest of the message form has been burnt off. <laughs> Yes, on the dual carriageway coming out of Southampton, uh, in fact, at Winchester, it gets very narrow and there's a crash barrier down the middle. I'm coming up there one autumn evening and I can't understand why on earth the cars are swerving all over the road in front of me. I thought, oh my God, what am I going to find? Eventually, I pull up alongside and there, believe it or not, is a fellow, one foot on the curbstone, one foot on the road, hopping along, on the, rubbing up against this crash barrier. Well, of course, there's traffic behind me, so I whistle up to the next junction, come back down the other side, park on the grass version. Oi, mate, come over. And he comes over. I said, what on earth are you doing? He said, well, I'm walking from Southampton. I said, well, why, the why don't you walk on the verge then? <laughs> no, he said, you never know who might jump out at you. <laughs> Members of the Winchester Police Force. This is the Pier of Pope Baths in Bournemouth, and tonight this is the scene of a grand aqua circus. Among the audience tonight will be newlyweds Graham and Nicky Whitworth and a few of their friends. But Graham's going to see a lot more of the show than Nicky, because what Graham doesn't know is that for the past few weeks, in total secrecy, star high diver Bill Maidman has trained Nicky to play a leading role in tonight's water ballet. Halfway during the show, Nikki's going to excuse herself, get changed, and then next time Graham sees her, she will be the star of the water ballet. <laughs> oh. Right, Nikki. Now, you've been training in secret for about six weeks. Has Graham got any idea what's going on? No, as far as he's concerned, I've just been at home cooking and, you know, doing the shopping. How do you think Graham's going to react when he sees you playing the leading role in the spectacular? Oh, I think you'll be quite surprised. <laughs> uh, Do you think you'd be impressed? Yes, yes, I would think so, yes. He's, um, I think he'd probably be stuck for words for once in his life. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is your first time in show business. It's a leading role. Any first night nerves? Yes, <laughs> definitely, yes. Well, don't worry. I promise you we are all behind you. So just enjoy it, OK? Right. Great. And if you want to find out how Nicky gets on, then join us after the break. Also, in a moment, Matthew gets a toe and tries to keep his feet. While we ask, will a husband get the blues when his wife goes dotty? And welcome back to Game for a Laugh. Now, just to remind you, Graham Whitworth is down there at the water ballet, totally unaware that his wife, Nikki, is about to become a superstar. The excitement's building, and any moment now, the still unsuspecting Graham is going to be temporarily minus Nicola. Yes, it's the old contact lens ploy. <laughs> and now Nicola's on her way to be transformed from spectator to swimming beauty.
two or three circles and all this lot came. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> couldn't believe it. Yeah. Just couldn't believe it. Fantastic. You didn't want to dive in and rescue her then? No. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to say to Nikki now? Love her. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you please put your hands together for two lovely people, Graham and Nikki Whitworth, yeah. who are both game for a laugh. <laughs> was in Bournemouth playing his games. I was also in the area filming my games, which by popular demand won't be shown this week. <laughs> However, while I was in the vicinity, I thought I would pop into the Aqua Circus and lend him my moral support. Well, mouth on me, big mouth, you see. That's the last time I lend anyone my moral support. By the time I'd finished, my moral was all soggy and my support was completely gone. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet David and Anne Pincus. Now, with Anne's help a few days ago, we managed to bring a spot of colour into David's life. Today, we're in sunny Brighton. This is the home of David and Anne Pincus. David's at work right now, which gives us just enough time with Anne's help to play a little joke. As you can see, their home is a, a charming, delicate, traditional Regency cream. <laughs> However, by the time David gets back, it's going to be transformed with a bold display of regatta blue and pastel green. But how will David react? Let's ask Anne. Anne? Right. First of all, Anne, what sort of mood was David in when he uh, left this morning? Oh, he was in a very good mood this morning. <laughs> he was fine. Yes. What sort of mood do you think he's going to be when he comes home and sees the house transformed? My God, I think he'll go absolutely berserk. <laughs> <laughs> How does he uh, like bold colours? Well, he does like bright colours, actually, but I don't really think for the outside of the house. Well, let's find out. He'll be home a bit later. I painted it, I painted it, up the middle and down the back, every cranny and every crack. I painted it, painted every part, and though I got an artist, it looked a work of art. He's been out here watching it, and he said he's going to have it exactly the same. Possibly. Honestly. I think it's lovely. Really? Lovely. The girls will love it. You can't. It's a listed building. You've got to do it the same with it's cream or white. What would the council say? <laughs> Honestly, I'm not, David. I think it's lovely. In fact, I think Tony's here, actually. He's just finishing off the, uh, the last touches. Tony, are you still there? Mrs. 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 What, David? Mrs. What? Hello? Is that Hello? Tony? Though, is no. Hello? Hello, you Tony? Call? Yeah? Yeah? I'm just finishing off. OK. Has he had what? written instructions? What? Has he had written instructions? What do you mean, written instructions? <laughs> well, who, who asked him to do it? Yeah, I told you, he came round this morning, offered me this terrific deal. So cheap. It's only oh, £150. Pounds. Looks nice, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry? It's a list of protected building. It, well, it's going to be old fashioned, you know. I think by the time you realise that the entire street's going to be like this, really. <laughs> what? I thought he'd like I it, thought, too. Uh, I, I think it's it lovely. Nice. I told you, Bill's going to have his done the same. He thinks it's he so nice, honestly. He must be out of your mind. I'm not, David. I mean, what don't you like about it? Is it the face? I mean, we can actually make it smile if you want. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's lovely. I think the girls will think it's absolutely super. In fact, they say that all their friends are having brightly coloured houses. Have you been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Well, don't be ridiculous. You can't. It's, it's, out of, it's, it's out of character with you. How can you possibly suddenly say you want a blue with, with the spots on it? <laughs> Bold, bright colours. It's regatta blue, that, and... Uh... <laughs> I've just told you, he said he thinks it's absolutely super. Impossible, Bill. I've known for 25 years. How could he possibly... Well, he's going to have his done probably the same, yeah. isn't he? Well, exactly we're going the to same. do that sort of like in about a month's time, I think. Yes, yes. You'll agree that it's going to be a good talking point. I mean, when you have people around, you know, like for dinner and things, you're not going to be stuck with conversation anymore, are you? <laughs> <laughs> they're going to say, well, Absolutely, like, it's yeah. a landmark now, exactly, Absolutely. yes, yes. I cannot believe it. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, I'm not going to believe it. I think it's a bit of the, uh, the uh, railings fantastic. as well. 
What about doing the railings? Do you think that's going to make a difference? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maybe that, that might sort of blend it all a bit more. Maybe if we did the railings in the sort of greeny colour yeah. that uh, is there. Yeah. Oh, 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 I mean, if you want, I mean, we could actually... Is it the dots you don't like? Because, I mean, I, I had to uh, look far and wide for a circle, man, you know, because... That is what <laughs> we could actually get them doing stripes if you're, if you're really worried about it, across and down. We could actually... Yeah, link they're not them. even circles. They're not even circles. Yes, they are. Well, they're not. They're not. I thought they were... Pretty neat myself. No, terrible. Absolutely. Well, that's terrible. Your, I mean, do you fancy the stripes in? I no, mean, not at all, no. we could we could actually. Unfortunately, my wife's um, she's gone off a rocker. Tell us, uh, do you really think that Anne is off a rocker? Not really. As you can see from the film, I was absolutely astounded by the whole thing. <laughs> I don't think she was off a rocker. Has she, has, has she ever done anything like that before? Well, she hasn't before, but I shall certainly have to watch it out in the future. <laughs> <laughs> and it must have come uh, as quite a talking point. What did the neighbours say when all this was happening and afterwards? Well, one lady liked it so much, she was really upset when she saw it being painted the next day, but for its normal colour. <laughs> you see, they really did like it. However, I think you like it a bit better now, because we did, in fact, uh, repaint it properly yes, for you. fine, just fine. You in like it In fact, better, now. in fact, better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, you deserved it, because you really were. Game for a laugh. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, but I'm afraid that is all for... Well, actually, it's not quite all, because we've, before we go tonight, you know that old tear-up-the-telephone-directory game? Well, what we've done is we've given some members of our studio audience telephone directories, and the competition is, can they rip them up before the credits roll? While they're doing it, we have to say thank you again for watching. Please join us at the same time next week, when we very much hope you'll be watching us... Watching you. Watching us. Watching you. Goodbye! Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.